Alright everyone, welcome back to Random Fixes. So do you have a ThinkPad that has this junky trackpad that the whole pad simply sinks down when you press it? So today we're going to take a look how to fix the problem by swapping a 3 button traditional ThinkPad trackpad that is equipped with some of the newer models of ThinkPads. So enough talking, let's jump in. So as always, the first step is to remove the battery if possible, so that we don't accidentally short anything in the process. And then next, we're going to take the small Phillips screwdriver to undo some screws that are holding the palm rest. Now it is not necessary to remove all the screws on the back panel, as you can see here and on the side, they're just holding the display hinge. So we're just going to take the cover off, and then underneath the panel, there's our RAM and here's our SSD. So if you would like to learn how to upgrade the SSD and the RAM for this machine, leave a comment down below. But I believe that you can figure it out yourself since the machine is so straightforward. And then we just need to continue to undo the screws. So those screws are actually in the same size and length, so don't worry about mixing them up. Alright next, we're going to remove the keyboard here. Since the detail is going to be pretty small, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. As you can see, there's a little dent here and across the entire keyboard there are some more dents. So here and the last one is right next to the decimal point in the numpad area. So next, we can take a flathead screwdriver, or in this case, I'm using a plastic prying tool to avoid scratching my keyboard. And then you just push the keyboard forward, and don't worry about if you hear a click, as you know, ThinkPad is pretty tough, unlike, you know, Mac. And then just follow the same step for all three dents on the keyboard. And after you're done with that, there's some more little screws that we need to undo to remove the keyboard. So next, I'm going to take a smaller bit than the one we were using to remove the keyboard. Undo all the screws on the keyboard and also don't worry about losing them since they are all held by clips to the keyboard. Alright, after all the screws are loose, take our prying tool to lift the bottom of the keyboard and then pull the keyboard back a little bit and open it like clamshell and the keyboard should be open right away. So the wiring here are pretty generic ribbon cable connections. So you can see the black locking piece here, just take a flat head screwdriver, lift it like that. And undo this like that, and you can pull them out with little effort. And there we go, we just freed the keyboard. Alright, we're going to remove the palm rest bezel from the laptop. So I'm going to start at the corner here since there's an express card slot. And then take your flat head screwdriver or any prying tool and start prying. just like that and stick the tool in and it is super easy to pop these clicks off just like that and then take your time walking around the bezel all right before we take the bezel completely off the chassis there is one more ribbon cable that we need to disconnect that's this cable here for the power button so follow the same step as any other ribbon cables. Alright, after that being done, we can wiggle this a little bit to set the bezel completely loose. Just be careful there are still ribbon cables connected to the touchpad here, and we don't want to damage that. Alright, and then we just need to flip this open just like the keyboard. Alright, here's our touchpad assembly. And we're just going to take our prying tool and follow the same step to disconnect these ribbon cables, connect to the motherboard here. And then we can free the bezel completely from the chassis. So on the bezel, we got five screws that we need to undo. They are located here, 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 and here. Since I've already tried swapping the trackpad, I lost a screw here because the new trackpad does not have a screw hole here. Now I'm just going to undo all the screws holding the trackpad in place. Uh, 
I actually forgot to disconnect the ribbon cable in the first place, but it is not a big deal. Just follow the same step, except this one has the black piece in the front rather than the back that we need to flip. After that, lift the palm rest panel and there we go, we just free the touchpad. Now let's do a quick comparison between the two designs. You can see here the old trackpad actually syncs as a whole piece when you press on it. And the new one actually syncs just in one corner. And up here we got three really nice buttons for the track point. And then on the back, here's the screw hole I was talking about. The new one has four screw holes and the old one has five. But don't worry too much about that, four screw holes are enough to hold the track padding place for any operations. Alright next, we're gonna assemble the new touchpad to our palm rest panel. Just put the four screws back on and the touchpad should be held in tightly. Last, I'm gonna use a pair of tweezers to connect the ribbon cables to the new touchpad because the space here is a little bit too tight. Alright, here's our new trackpad. Oh man, it just looks way better than the old one already. Very, very clicky. Next, we're gonna connect this ribbon cable and this ribbon cable back to the motherboard. Again, tweezers are a really, really helpful tool when you're trying to connect ribbon cables. Alright then, we're gonna put the palm rest back. Just reverse the step we took it out. Remember to put the top bezel under the display first. Alright, just push around the bezel to engage all those clips. You're gonna hear a lot of clicking sound in the process. I know you're excited to get the keyboard back in place, but don't forget we're still having a power button we need to connect. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time trying to power up your laptop. Alright, we're finally gonna connect the keyboard. Just set it upside down like this on the palm rest and connect the ribbon cable back to the motherboard. And then we can close our keyboard. With the keyboard connected, we're gonna put it back in. Just make sure you put the top bezel of the keyboard here beneath the palm rest bezel here. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time trying to get it fully functioning. So just push it all the way in. It is okay if this side is sticking up a little bit because we're gonna fasten all those screws in the keyboard. Great, we're almost there. Now just take a flathead screwdriver or a prying tool, whichever you prefer, to pull the keyboard down. So you can see here the keyboard is sitting flush against the palm rest bezel. So we're just gonna push some keys to make sure that the keyboard has been installed correctly. With the keyboard securely in place, we're just gonna flip the laptop back and put back all the screws. All right, let's test this. Now stay tuned because we're gonna talk about how to install the proper driver for this trackpad if you're using Windows. Now this trackpad just works out of the box for Ubuntu. So the first thing we need to do after we start our laptop is to connect the external mouse. Since the reaction for this trackpad is gonna be a little bit weird, and then the next step is going to go to the control panel and uninstall the Synaptics driver for the old trackpad. Now in my case, I've already uninstalled that because there's no program that showed as Synaptics here in my control panel. Alright, after you finish uninstalling, restart your computer and we're going to install this version of Synaptics driver. Just note the newest driver from the Lenovo website is not going to work properly for this trackpad we just installed. I'm going to put a link down in the video description below so you don't have to worry about the driver issue. After you finish downloading, just double click and install and follow the instructions for whatever the program tells you to do. Oh.
Alright everyone, that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful and if it is, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. So next time we'll be performing a screen swap for this ThinkPad W540. So you can go from this crappy TM panel to a beautiful IPS panel.